before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Help me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. You come. 
Sabbath. Welcome to Youth Life Unplugged. We've missed you guys so much, our dear friends. And we are also happy to be back in our studio, you know, with our Youth Life program. You know, over the past few weeks, we have been interrupted. You know, our normal broadcast was not on as usual. Um, but as you can look around, um, we are more spacious. We have been doing some much needed renovations. And we are happy to announce that Youth Life is back officially. As a matter of fact, we are going bigger and better as we try to serve the Lord and as we try to champion the gospel, you know, through the length and breadth of cyberspace. Yeah. To you, friends, we want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we know that you would have had um, challenges in your week. Um, we all had work, some at school. Um, some of us are still battling with illnesses. But nevertheless, we are happy to be back. We invite you at this time to share the page, like the page, um, send a comment. As a matter of fact, invite all your friends. We have a lot of good stuff in store for you tonight. And we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts, we are very thankful for your loyalty, your faithfulness. Despite our ups and downs, you have never deserted us. And we want to thank our early viewers for tuning in, even very early. And as we could see, already tuned in, we have Tiruna Lashington. We have Pastor Isidore. I think he probably was the first person to share our page tonight. Wow. We have Joyce Lynn Ogis. We have Ruby Murray, we have Warnett McKenzie, we have Neptune Calvin, and the list goes on. Um, now, officially, we have not said you know, a, a nice prayer to bless our studio. And this afternoon, before we start, we want to thank God for, for, for providing the resources, the means, the efforts, and the talents so that our studio could have been improved and even renovated as we are better able to serve you. And to do that special prayer this afternoon, we have our dear Joel Johnson. He'll be asking God to pour out his blessings on this place. Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, friends, and good evening to all of you viewing on Facebook and throughout the entire world. Uh, this week before we pray, I saw a post on Facebook, and uh, it made me think. It said, what if the next day you wake, all you have are the things that you thank God for the day before? And this just reminded me how important it is to thank God for everything that he has given you. So tonight... As we are about to start you drive at this new space, we're going to pray. So I invite you to join me wherever you are as we thank God for his blessings. Let's pray. Most kind Father, eternal Savior, Redeemer, Counselor, and Friend, Lord, we pause to give you thanks and praise, Lord, because you have been so good to us. Father, you've spared our lives for yet another week, and you've given us the opportunity, Lord, to come into your courts once again to ascribe praises unto your holy name. Father, we thank you for the six days of hard toil and labor. And as we come here tonight, Father, we pray Lord, that you will just accept our worship. Lord, in a special way, we lift up this entire place before your throne, Lord, our new Youth Live Unplugged Studio. Father, you have blessed us tremendously. You have provided the means by which we were able to finance this place. You have provided the skilled labor whereby the workmen were able to come and fit this place so beautifully, Lord. Such neat and tidy work. Father, we are indeed grateful for what you have done. And Lord, we pray, Lord, as you bless this place, may this place be used towards the furtherance of your cause. And may many young persons and adults alike be drawn closer to you by the ministry that is presented here through this Youth Life program. Be with my co-hosts tonight, Lord. Be with the pastor, be with the organizers, be with the musicians, the persons who sang. Bless us all, Lord, and be with all of our viewers and viewing land. And Father, may we all be blessed by the program tonight. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Alright now friends, as you look in our studio tonight, we have some pleasant faces. Yeah. And as usual, we always have special guests for you right here at Youth Life. Um, but we're going to have some special introductions a bit later as you get more familiar with our cast for tonight. Now online audience, we need your help tonight. Now we want to officially let Facebook land know that we are back. And tonight we'll be sharing a very special post. It's going to be hashtag Youth Life is back. Tell a friend. So as we get ready for our song service, we want to invite every single person um, to put it as your status on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, wherever it is. Send it as a message. We're going to be sending tonight, hashtag, Youth Life is back. Tell a friend. So for the next 10 seconds, um, let us just saturate Facebook with the messages 
that youth life is back better than before and tonight we have something special in the lineup for you but not only for you but for your friends as well um, but tonight you're going to share the page like the, the, the page comment and tonight we're going to be using our special message hashtag youth life is back tell a friend all right All right, so while we get ready for our song service, we just want to interact with some of our online audience. Uh, Brother Joel, who, who you see is on tonight? I see we have Vicky Kato saying happy Sabbath all the way from SVG. All right. Happy Sabbath, Vicky. We also have uh, Barbara Bedford. Happy Sabbath from all. Uh, we have uh, Steadley Isaac saying happy Sabbath. And uh, Talisha has just joined. Welcome, Talisha. I invite your other friends. Uh, share it up. Hashtag Youth Live is back. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Now, Sister Asha, what's our first song for tonight? Um, our first song tonight will be hymn number two by Sister Vicky Cato from SVG. All right. All creatures of our God and King. Wonderful. T-shirt. Can I guess what's her name tonight? I'm sure some of you would have known her, would have seen her before um, in your churches, in all your programs, but you've got to guess what is her name tonight. Um, I will be specially recognizing the person um, who recognizes or mentions her name first. Um, so that is our challenge as we get the brain warmed up um, for our program today. What's the name of our new guest tonight? All right. Um, Brother Jumal, what's our next song? Um, next we'll be singing hymn number 632, requested by Meryl Colin Green, right. he was 632. Until then. Until then. And we'll be singing only the first verse and the chorus. First and the chorus, yes, alright. So we can accommodate most as many songs as possible. That's right. awesome. That's right. Yeah. 
Simon, all the way from London. London. And we say welcome, thanks for tuning in. And we ask that you spread the word with your English friends as well. And remember, mm -hmm. tonight, our simple challenge, we want to find out what's the name of our newest guest in our studio tonight. Um, let's see who's going to be the first person. And we have a challenge for everybody as well. We're going to be sharing on our statuses. Youth life is back. Tell a friend. All right, Sister Asha, our next song. Our next song comes from Indra Thomas, him 449. You know, you know, while um, we get ready for that next song, um, I'm seeing that we, we have um, a submission of the name. I'm Already? seeing somebody saying Mrs. Bola. All right. Um, now, no, Sister Kim, I know you're behind the scenes, you know, but we, that's not sufficient. No. We want first name, we want <laughs> middle name, we want last name. <laughs> um, so, so far, somebody got the surname correct. That is true. <laughs> Her name is Mrs. Bola. But what is her first name? I'll mm -hmm. be getting warmed up tonight as we get ready for our next song. Never part again. Never part again. singing that song every day oh, um, we are sad that he's not here with us tonight and he'll be leaving us soon and we just want to give a special big up to michael kimo hosford for all your contributions right. we know that you are elsewhere tonight but we believe that your sentiments are here with us and as we sang that song we did that in memory of you may god bless you and may he guide you with your future endeavors yeah. um now i'm seeing some submissions here um, of the name. what we see there what, what, what names do we have see kimberly bola is that correct? No. no. That is not correct. No. I saw multiple persons I'm, I'm saying Kimberly. We have one. I think the Kimberly came after you said Kimberly. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh. So, so people get saved. All right, but, but you are wrong. Good try, good try, good try. Good try. Um, so we, we only have Bola correct so far. We're still within our first name. Our next song tonight is going to be hymn number. Five to four, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Five to twenty-four. Amen. And, and remember, really hashtag. What's our hashtag tonight? Youth life, life is back. back. Tell, Tell a friend. 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 That's right. Youth life is back. Tell, Tell a friend. A friend. Oh 
special guest from St. Lucia. We want to recognize Francis Hamlet, Natoma Hostin. Um, it's good to have you. Ina Alexander. We have Heaven Since. We have Juanet McKenzie. We have Kim Dakota. We have Avalyn Coraline Douglas. And by that second name there, we could, we could only imagine what country she comes from, the land of Cory. That's way. <laughs> Trinidad and Tutu. It's good to have you. All right, our next song tonight is going to be what? Our next song is hymn number 334, Come Down Font of Every, every blessing. blessing. And this was requested by Sister Katisha George. Yeah. 
Him number 449, never part again, and that is from Talisha Roberts. Good night, Talisha. I think we, we, we sounded last one, right? We had Never Part Again, that was Brother Key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my popular demand, 449. Yeah. So, I guess we sing it again. <laughs> so, we got, we're going to sing a different one. one. Let's just sing another one. Yeah. I think we have, um, did we do Shana's, Shana's song, Shana Francois? No, 184. 184, Jesus paid it all. Jesus is paid it all. Alright, Shana, so we're doing your song as the last song tonight. <laughs> inconveniences indeed it was worth it we want to give you an official welcome to our brand newly renovated studio and i'm telling you we're going to have some powerful improved expanded programs as the week continues to roll on um, now we have the privilege of just hearing a little from our guests this afternoon and we go this evening we're going to ask some of you in audience as well just to share a bit with us um, so in just one line or so we want to find out what the week was like for you so in just about three words, we're going to be describing our week. And we want to hear from your online audience, you know, how the week was for you. Um, was it good? Was it bad? Um, did God work out any miracles for you? What blessings you had? Um, what answered prayer? What rare, you know, encounters did you have? What was the experience like? We want to hear from you. In just about three short words, tell us what your week was like. Um, now we're going to start with Brother Joel. Mm. In his brightly colored orange dress. Three short, three short words. My week was amazing. That's the first word I'll say. Right. My week was very productive. I got a lot done. Mm. And my week was painful. I had an experience with a finger that I that I accidentally cut. Wow. And I lost part of the nail. So oh. that was painful. <laughs> so amazing, productive. And still painful. And still painful. <laughs> wow. Sister Asha, what was your week like? Uh -huh. It started off very frustrating, then tiring. But I think today. It really culminated when we celebrated World Teachers Day and right. oh, yeah. my classroom, oh my gosh. <laughs> they just they just made me feel really amazing today. Oh, the hugs, the smile, the sweets, awesome. the pictures drawn. I mean some bad spelling, you know, but <laughs> 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 they really did make my day today. Right, right. So it was frustrating, it was tiring. Yes, but today just made it all so worthwhile. Oh boy. Awesome. And we wanna big up the teachers in a very oh, yeah, special man. way. Mm -hmm. All the teachers. Today all is day. National Teachers Day around the globe. Yeah, World Teachers Day. And um, we're very happy for all the contributions that they would have made. So teachers, we tip our hats to you. Um, thank you so much for all that you have done in our lives. Um, we are only here today because somebody took the time to teach us. God bless you and we love you and we appreciate all that you did for us. Um, before we go to Brother Jamal, we have um, Ruby Murray. She said the week was a blessing. Um, that's good to hear. Awesome. Um, to God be the glory. Um, Meryl Glean, productive, hectic, but blessed. Um, so we see that God always gives us mixed blessings. The challenges are there. Um, but praise God, we can always say um, that it has been good. Amen. Um, we also have greetings from Lydia Belfon. Happy Sabbath. Enjoy your weekend. Rachel Jerome Graham is saying, my breakthrough is coming soon. Amen. Um, so she sounds like she, she's in a bit of a struggle, but she can see the light at the she end of the tunnel. Amen. 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 Our There's always is coming. Light, um, one had said her week is what? Victorious. Victorious. Wow, she Praise overcame God something. She was triumphant. And we thank God for that. So, John, what tell us something about your week. Well, my work was very exciting. It was yeah. fun and it was kind of tiring. Right. Yeah, so exciting. It's exciting. Fun and tiring. Fun and tiring. That's all this excitement and fun. You must be tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. We, we thank God. We thank God. We thank God for that. Sister Jillian, our newest guest, how was your week? Well, my week was productive just as well as Joel Zone and 
exciting also and it was eye-opening mm. because I'm about to embark on a new journey so wow. it will open my mind to think bigger. Praise awesome. God for that. Yes. And um, I believe we'll be hearing just a bit more of her journey that she's talking about in a bit later on in, in our program. Um, now how was my week boy? Hmm. My week had new beginnings. New beginnings. I was real tired. But I'm happy to be here. Amen. <laughs> well, I told you about to announce a new member of the family again. <laughs> <laughs> not, not so soon, man. I want to be fruitful and multiply. And when you get a ticket, in the Good. fullness of time. Fullness of time. <laughs> in the fullness of time. All right, we have uh, Michelle Mendoza. Um, she's saying hi to Felicia Frederick. Happy Sabbath to you, my dear. Um, Luana Desmond Alexis is saying what? Her week was? Great. Great. Thank, Thank God, God from the Alexis family. The Alexis family. Thank oh, God. Sorry. Alberta Harvey is giving her greetings. She's saying what? Happy, Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Alberta. Happy Sabbath to everybody. All right, and this time we get ready for some announcement. Um, there's a lot of buzzing that's happening in our conference as usual. As you would know by now, the Grenada Conference is a very active, very vibrant conference. Yeah, and where many activities are happening almost every week, um, we have something new that's happening. And our panelists will you know, share a bit in promoting the different activities um, that will be upcoming in the near future. We're going to start with Sister Asha. Okay, so, well, we are in the North, in St. Patrick's and so, the Northern um, Youth Federation is having their prayer and praise night on October 19th of this, this month, this year, <laughs> at the Montreux Seventh-day Adventist Church. Nice. At the River Sally Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I still have um, pictures of the last one in my mind at Montreux. Oh, and okay. <laughs> it was wonderful. It was really a blessing to be there. So come on out at River Sally. River Sally. It's scheduled to start at around 7.30. Bring a friend. You are always welcome. After that, on the 20th of October, we will have a grand um, convention, a youth convention, and that night we will have a social St. Lucian style mm. to wrap it up. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to see that boy, St. Lucian style. <laughs> speak some part to whatever. Well, Pastor, Pastor is it, no, you're going to teach us a thing or two. Yeah. Um, anybody know part to it? No, but we all agree. Uh, so, no Francais. 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 Um, led by Pastor Isadou. Pastor Isadou going to teach us some Pastor. Yeah, man, in the Northern District, we'll be having um, a weekend, Youth Federation, Nice Convention and Social, Lucian Style. Okay. Brother Joel, what's up? Yeah, well, we, we have a lot happening still on the island as usual. Uh, guys, look out for the club training coming up at the end of October. That's a youth training. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on the campsite, right? Yeah. On the campsite. So all our club members, we have training, master guides and so on. Your training comes the last week in October. And also, we're looking forward to the end of the year, this year, our grand investiture service. That's going to be on the 8th, mm -hmm. December 8th. So uniform clubs, get your uniform together, start training, start preparing, work on your cards, work on your honors for our grand investiture service okay. on December 8th. Lovely. Uh, we go to Jamal. What's happening? Well, um, beginning tonight at the Paradise and the Adventist Church, mm -hmm. we have our Revelation Seminar. Um, we have a special guest from the St. George's Archibald Avenue Church. Yeah. And continuing tomorrow, mm -hmm. it continues tomorrow for the whole day, so we invite everyone to come and be blessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we also have um, the St. George's Choir Day. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah, we have the day. Choir Day tomorrow also. All right. Yes, so anyway, close, we can go and be blessed. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Sister Jillian, what's happening? Well, just a gentle reminder to all the churches the, to have your delegates prepared and ready for the constituency meeting taking place on Sunday. This Sunday coming, October the 7th, it starts at 9 p.m. So get yourself in order, transportation, everything, and just be present and represent your church. Amen. So we have so much. Did, did we do about anything? I don't know, Pastor, you tell us anything um, else? No, I'm trying to remember. Um, any, well, we just want to notify all the church members. We, we can start praying. We know that church elections is in the air. Yeah. Um, God will be using us as leaders to choose leaders for the upcoming year. And um, we want to ask persons to pray. Take some time to allow God to lead you um, wherever God would have you so for the upcoming year. And we are also just, you know, praying with, with our pastors and our leaders as they direct the electoral process for the upcoming year. Yeah, and we pray, Pastor, that I hope some of the young persons in our church, when you're called upon to serve, that you accept the call Amen. and you let God use you in a mark and special way. Uh, I just say that God really has a work now for his young people. Yeah. And I, I have a passion to see young people being active in service. Amen. So young people, when you're called upon to serve, 
say yes. So Pastor, yeah. I want to say a special good night. My sister from, an, from Antigua sends wow. a shout out. She said happy Sabbath. And she just likes to make everyone know that I'm her brother. Ah. Happy Sabbath, Ashley. <laughs> and to the rest of your friends in Antigua joining us tonight. Happy amen, Sabbath. Amen. Too. amen. And we have a couple of persons um, sharing what the, the week was like. Um, Sister Asha, have you seen anything? Um, well, we have heaven sent saying it's complicated, tiring, and blessed. Wow. Oh, man. What complicated, complicated. week for? I hope God could tired. untangle that. Wow. <laughs> but it was blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Kimoya saying it was good. It All was right. good, nice. Uh -huh. Alberta, I had a challenging, challenging. week, mm -hmm. but thank God I'm alive. Praise, Praise God for life. Amen. For that, yeah, yeah. And we have Angela Melius. God is good all the time. I want to thank him. All right. And so we have, who again? Thank him. Thomas J. and Matisse. I didn't see St. Lucia in the house. Boy. Again. <laughs> so you better come down for the social. Come down and teach us some back <laughs> Yeah, man. And Pastor Isadou and Pastor Carol Daniel um, will be there leading us out in that social activity. And we look forward to having that. Well, he actually said he needs to come and join the social, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. That's going to be good, man. Michelle Mendoza, Trinidad in the house. Um, right, right, right. We have Asha Igad. Happy Sabbath to the panel. And of course, right, her brother, Joel. Lovely. Um, now, tonight, friends, we have a very interesting topic. As a matter of fact, it concerns all of our young persons. And it concerns the title or the topic of employment. Uh, we know that we are living in a time of economic recession. Mm. Persons are looking for jobs desperately. And as a matter of fact, persons are now creating their own jobs. And tonight as Christians, God wants us to be the head and not the tail. And he wants us to be gainfully employed. And you know, friends, one of the first things that God gave Adam to do um, was work. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. He ensured that Adam was gainfully employed. He gave him the garden to dress, to look after, to care for. And so too, we are expected to work. Um, so we want to share some helpful, functional tips that can help you in your search for a job. But at the same time, wherever God has planted us, he calls us to be a witness. Um, so if that's your need tonight, you want to share that information with a friend, um, stay tuned, don't leave, as we get ready for our program tonight. Um, but at this time, we want to get ready for an item of special music, as we get ready for the balance of our program. Listen, and be blessed. Enjoy. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love strong heart, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing. Standing. 
back to Youth Live Unplugged, and there we had it. Very nice rendition from Sister Sarana. Um, standing on the promises of God. And um, regardless of whatever we may be going through in life, um, feeling unstable, um, we know that God's promises, they are solid. solid. And whatever God says, you know, He always keeps His word. Amen. And we want to thank you for tuning in with us. Um, well, tonight, remember, we are sharing on all our social media platforms. Hashtag, Youth Life is back. Tell a friend. And tonight, our theme for tonight, are you employable? Um, that might sound as a weird question. And we might just be, have been given the advice before. All you need to do is go to school, um, get your CXCs, get your TAM CC certificates, um, get your master's, your bachelor's, your doctorate, and you're, and you're, and you're, you're set for life. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, there are many doctors at home. Mm -hmm. There are many persons with master's degree at home, yeah. and persons with bachelor's degree, and all the different requirements. Um, but tonight, the question are you employable? Um, no, our panelists tonight, they all have different um, work experiences. Um, they come from different backgrounds. And tonight, as they introduce themselves, they'll be saying just a little bit about where they came from and um, what, what's going on in the neck of the woods. We're going to start with Sister Asha tonight. All right. Okay, so for the past 24 years of my life, I have been a student. Thereafter, <laughs> I would have um, worked as a content specialist with first oncology. Um, thereafter, I became a teacher at the Grenada Seventh-day Adventist Comprehensive School. Right now, I am employed as a volunteer teacher at the Mount Rose Seventh-day Adventist Primary School. Right. This is the one that I think I enjoy most of all of them. <laughs> awesome. awesome. No, 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 before I go to the next one, I mean, what? Working as a volunteer is more fun than working for pay. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, wow. I, well, not the pay part of it, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... The age group. Yes, they are yeah. more receptive, respectful, yeah. and they make you really want to come out of bed on morning. Right. So when that's you reach on morning, it's like, Miss, and they have to hug you, and then... When, uh, well, the attention span is a lot um, shorter, shorter right, so right, that right. is a challenge in itself, Most but mm. they are more receptive when right. you do right. connect with them. Right, 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 right. Nice. Um, so from secondary school, um, she's now at the primary school where she volunteers her services. Wow. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. It takes a lot. Yeah. And, and it, you really need to have a passion for children mm -hmm. to enjoy being around children, especially that age. <laughs> yeah, so it really shows. And when she spoke about earlier how, the, how warm the reception was today mm -hmm. for all teachers, they, yeah. it just shows that you, you love what you do. Yes. Yeah. So um, that's good. I actually, on my way down from school, I, I kept getting a call from one of my students past students at secondary school and I'm like, what is he calling for? <laughs> Called to say, Miss, I remember you. Brother Joel, tell us a little about a bit about yourself. Uh, well, the, the short version of it. <laughs> I mean, keep on with the theme about are you employed, but I'm just gonna speak briefly. Uh, well I've been a student for quite a long time. I still consider myself a lifelong student. Mm. I'm always learning. But my first job was as a teller at a bank then the bank was called NCB National Commercial Bank. Oh, that <laughs> back in the day boy. Back in the day. Don't try to calculate my age. <laughs> so that was it that was it. And then after that I was a teacher for a while. Uh, I got transferred from Ministry of Education to Ministry of Finance. Okay. Where okay. I am at currently mm -hmm. as a senior tax inspector with responsibilities for registration and mm. taxpayer services. Mm. I am also a full-time farmer. I love farming. Mm. I do it as a hobby. I do it to make money sometimes. Mm. I do it to give away stuff a lot of the times. And uh, this passion grew from my father. My father introduced me to farming. Mm. At first, I never liked it. But it's something that I love doing now. Right. I, go, I go to the farm some mornings before I go to work. Right. And right. then get right. to work. Right. Um, so I work full job. Uh, on evenings, I manage an apartment building, and I also have a real estate company, along with two other colleagues of mine. So it keeps me busy mm -hmm. all through the week. So I work six days a week. Thank mm -hmm. God for Sabbath where I rest. <laughs> <laughs> but Saturday nights I'm working. What? <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, friends, I mean, what? I don't know how many heads he has, but he's wearing many hats. <laughs> um, wow! And as a young man, um, I think you're doing well for yourself. Mm -hmm. And God's grace, I'm sure. Yeah, and and it's a, a model. And I believe a, a challenge for you know the brand of young people coming up that 
we are not just to be satisfied with the job that we are offered, uh, but we also can create jobs for ourselves. And I know you will have a lot to share, you know, in the different aspects. The experiences will differ. Um, probably the uh, young persons would want to be involved in what you, Sister Asha, are um, currently doing. Mm -hmm. And they need some tips. Uh, yeah. And we're going to hear a, a lot from Definitely. From well, hopefully tonight may not give us the time to speak about everything. Mm -hmm. But I always, always encourage young persons to come speak to me. If you see me on the street, ask me a question, talk to me. I'm always willing to share knowledge. Yeah. I think knowledge is something that, can, that needs to be shared. Yeah. And I'm, I really like to encourage young persons to get to be, start being entrepreneurs. Mm. Start thinking of ways that you could do things for yourself. Yeah. You don't always, it's important to be employed, but sometimes when you can't be employed, it's good to be employ yourself, yourself, be an employer, and yeah. create a business for your other friends. Yes. Because being at Adventist and we know the future, God mm -hmm. has given us insight into the future, we know what is coming. Mm -hmm. And there is a time that's going to come where they may not want to employ you because you're a Seventh-day Adventist, yeah. because you're keeping the Sabbath. Because you only want to work six days and not seven, they might try to segregate and mm -hmm. give you some sort of shunning. So, self-employed, that's what we do. Uh, before we go to Brother Jamal, uh, we want to encourage our audience as well who are viewing online. Um, tell us, what's your work experience like? Um, where are you currently employed? What the experiences has been like? Um, tonight it's all about sharing as we look at the question, are you employable? Brother Jamal. Well... For my whole life, I've been a student. I'm um, currently a student at the TA Marshall Community, Community College. Nice. But also during my holidays and little breaks, I was most times go to Grenville, make a little hustle. Explain what's going on. Bring on the team, man. <laughs> well, my father, well, um, my um, my family is in the farming business, so right. And yeah, we plant stuff, mm -hmm. right now we have cucumbers and stuff. Right. So then, once I get the free time, I go sometimes storm, sometimes grab it and sell. So, so in other words, you don't have a little hustle, a big hustle, man. <laughs> Proper That's thing. a big hustle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a family establishment. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. enterprise, man. <laughs> exactly. And um, if you are involved in one of the best jobs, feeding the nation, mm -hmm. yeah. and without farmers, where would we be? Yeah, mm -hmm. true. And um, you know, yeah. I believe that everybody should have a little farming skill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's how we eat. And as you rightly said, we don't know how long um, the economy will be stable and what lies ahead. And we should be in a position to at least take care of the you know yeah. eating needs of our family. Oh, yeah. awesome. yeah. yeah. Well said. Yeah. Sister Julia, last but not least. Yes, yes. Well, good night to everyone again. Good night. Um, well, currently I'm into sewing. For the last six years, I've been doing my sewing on and off. Mm -hmm. It's something that I had liked since small. But coming from school, and as early pastor said, you know, you go to school, you do your subjects. At least you do what your parents said to do, so you'll be successful, you know, mm -hmm. in the environment of work. But in my stead, what happened, what I went to study, I never got a chance to really work doing it. Yeah. Because even so, if you have the education, you have the qualifications on paper, it's sometimes difficult to be employed only with what's on paper. So sometimes we need skills and in order to other attitudes and characters as a person to make employers want to grab you and want to pull you in. But I had this thing for sewing and it, it never showed me to say, okay, you went to school, you got a degree and nothing is happening. Instead of doing that, I use my skill on the side while still searching and it just so happened that all where I, where I have been employed was sewing. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten a job concerning my degree in information technology. Mm. And it keeps showing me that what we want is not what God wants for yes. us. Amen. Sometimes we have to follow where he's leading us. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's not the step that we expected in life. It's not what our family expected. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we put our trust and faith in God, believing that he knows best. Amen. So, always knows best. Yes. And Sometimes we're in life and the things we, we don't want to do is the thing that is coming in front of us over and over. So sometimes we just have to use what God has given us. And I have come to the understanding that God knows best and I'm going to do exactly what he wants for my life. Yeah. Probably trying to do something on the other side. I don't know what he is protecting me from. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I am going with him and at presently, as Brother Joel said, I am I'm currently self-employed, starting my own sewing business. Mm -hmm. It's something I love and enjoy, and when I'm at it, I keep singing. So you know, it's it's a joy, it's a peace, it's a comfort, mm -hmm. and it brings it brings a big smile to my face when I could sew something for my family, 
I have to say big up to them because they're my biggest customers and motivators. Uh, <laughs> so right. it brings a smile onto them and I rather they boast me than I say anything because I don't even tell people I sew, but people come to me and ask me to sew something. Right, so the right, word is right. getting out with me praising myself and I have to give God thanks for that. Amen. 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 Awesome. Um, now friends, tonight you see we have a loaded cast. <laughs> we have teacher, we have real estate consultant or manager, um, apartment manager, um, former teller, we have students, we have um, seamstress, and I am a pastor. And no, <laughs> no, no from, from since I, I was a, a little boy, as Brother Jamal said, you see the word hustler, I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, in primary school, I had my little enterprise, you know, oh, yeah. my little sweetie. I saw all of them from Trinidad. <laughs> I used to sell sweets in school. Oh boy. Even in secondary school, I used to sell dollar juice and them things like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, I always was interested um, in the business side of things. And um, even now as a pastor, you know, I've tried my hand at writing as well. So you could say, quote unquote, I'm an official author, but I love it. It's you a are. hobby. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm enjoying it thus far by the grace of God. Um, so we are seeing that, you know, our main form of employment does not only have to be, you know, what we are engaged in. But there are many different talents that God would have gifted us with. Okay. Um, now, one common theme that has been coming out through, you know, the introductions of yourselves is that sometimes the course you started out on yeah. is yeah. not where you always ended yeah. up. Sure, yeah. And tonight, people on you guys might be asking, um, Sabbath night, why, why are we talking about employment? But you'll be amazed mm -hmm. of how God works at our yeah. place of work. Um, so, Sasha, just quickly, what is yeah. your, or what was, or is your, original intention for your your form mm -hmm. of employment mm -hmm. well from as since i can remember myself since preschool mm -hmm. i made it so clear that i wanted to be a doctor you wanted to be a doctor and at a very young age i knew that i wanted to work with children right um well i'm getting the opportunity to work with children i am right. still passionate about medicine mm -hmm. and i see myself probably being a Doctor and teacher? <laughs> Doctor and teacher. Right. So, something like a pediatrician? Pediatrician, definitely. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so we see that God um, is taking you from path to path. Yeah. Um, probably you'll get into the destination, but yeah. along the way, the experiences are invaluable. Because yeah. Um, yeah. some people said that if I went into teaching, I would lose focus on what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I see now that I am <laughs> definitely interested in that's right. awesome right. but right. i'm seeing also that i love teaching so right so through the experience now you're yes. learning a different side of yourself yes. um brother um, joel how have you how have you seen god working um in terms of how your employment has transitioned oh boy um how, how important is it to pray how has god it is you? so important to pray prayer mm -hmm. has been a major part of my life mm -hmm. from from secondary school coming right through to where i am now it has only been by the grace and mercies of God. Amen, uh, amen, amen. Basically, in secondary school, my path to me was, was straight and my path was set. There's only one thing I wanted to do. And I said, that was medicine. Mm. I had a strong passion <laughs> wow. for medicine. Wow. My strongest wow. areas in school were sciences. Wow. And from, from secondary school, I went straight to SU right. with the intention of doing medicine. medicine. But uh, God had different plans. Wow. And he wow. set me on to, like I said earlier, my first job was at a bank. Mm -hmm. So God set me on the path of business. And since then, he has just been pushing me along that path. And, and uh, I'm just saying, God, I'm yours. Wherever you lead, I will follow. So Amen. I'm just following Amen. God's lead by his Amen. grace and Amen. wherever he takes me. You know, before we go to the, the other two, now we have a special message. I must read it to you. Yeah, read it. We, we, we have the husband of Sister Jillian. Ah. She said goodnight to the loving Jillian. <laughs> but you see how she blushes? <laughs> number one customer. Thanks for, for supporting right. the wife tonight. We're happy to have you. Uh, no, Sister Jillian, just one question we, before we get ready for our street talk segment, um, young brother Jamal. Um, how easy it is for a Christian young person to get a job? And when I say job, we're talking about the official it to fall being employed by somebody. I mean, your experience, how easy it is to get a job? I would say it's, it's as a bit of a balance. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't outweigh because you have some, some um, companies that you go to, mm -hmm. the hours, the times, the days mm -hmm. itself affects a Christian. And then you have those that you're a Christian and they will, be, they will compromise, mm -hmm. you understand, oh, allow okay. you and your faith, you know, respect mm -hmm. your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so it is, in a sense, balancing, mm -hmm. because 
it deals with the individual, mm -hmm. the person that owns the business, or even the, the human resource manager that you have interaction with when right. going to, and, and the person is involved in interviews and stuff. So, and then again, it's, it's the Christian itself, the person themselves, mm -hmm. presenting themselves in a proper manner for that interview. Right. And it's just the, the connection mm -hmm. that you might have in just that simple space of time. Right, right. Um, so, so, so what I gather from you there are opportunities, however, sometimes faith becomes a challenge, yes. what you believe. Yes. Right, right. Exactly. Uh, very interesting. Okay. Brother Jamal, um, one quick question. As a student, what do you look forward to the most in terms of being employed? Mm. Uh, we don't want to hear getting paid, eh? That's a bonus on the side. That's a bonus on the side. What do you look forward to? Um, well, Looking forward to, I look forward to it, like interaction between persons, you know, okay. um, and being like helping others because from since I was young, I wanted to, you know, help others. So I thought about like, being a teacher at first, but I realized, well, I uh, kind of like in medicine and science and things. So okay. you know, I thought about like, being a doctor, mm. but I'm um, still back in between, the, and I also think about like, being a pastor. So, what? Um, teacher, doctor, pastor. <laughs> Everything. Man, that's so my Jesus boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, but that's good, that's good, you know, yeah, so yeah. Adam um, can use us in a multitude yeah, of ways, so yeah. never limit your dreams, right? Yeah. Nice, nice. Pastor, as, as you're on that subject, I, yeah. I, just, I just want to add how important it is for us to even just allow God to use us Amen. at our place of work sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we don't see how important it is, but when we see that God would have placed us at that particular place, maybe for such a time as this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we need to recognize that God has put us there for a reason. And it, it, it brings a joy to my mind. And sometimes it's, it's almost like, like fishing sometimes. When persons come into my office, I might have like a little gospel music playing, have a two priorities on my desk. Right. And I'm, I'm like a fishing, I'm waiting for them to see something past right. them. And when they ask the question, they say, are you a Christian? I say, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so a, a door has opened and you get a chance now to share your faith. Right, right, right. Sometimes you may not have the time to give them a lecture or anything, mm -hmm. but you might be able to give them a priority yeah. or a book or just tell them that, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. Right. And that in itself mm -hmm. would have opened the door to just allow someone to see that, hey, mm -hmm. we still mm -hmm. have Christians, mm -hmm. we still have persons who love and serve and care about God. Amen. So Amen. use the opportunity you have, whether you're working or you're looking for a job, to share Jesus Christ. Nice. Um, so we continue on that tangent right after Street Talk. Um, let's see what the persons on the outside have to say about uh, Street Talk Employable. Street Talk. Are you employed? Well, now and then I got a little bush in walking Grenada on the road, and, but I accept it still with the respect of the Almighty because if you don't eat, you can't live. What, what, what skills do you possess to, to, to make somebody employ you? Well, I will need the, um, the government to employ me as an artist at Grenada. And I need a work within to myself where I could make money and I could always have money. I don't need to beg people. But guess what? No, I'm a, I'm a hustler on the street. I don't like to beg people for nothing. Sometimes I ask people for certain things, but the employment I will need is like, is to help me so I could be a better way as an artist. First to begin, right? My name is Peter Anthony Glasgow, right? And yes, I'm employed. What skills do you possess to make you employable? Well, agriculture. I'm an agriculture man. I have certificate in agriculture, agriculture science. Number one, the best in agriculture. Yes, sir. What skills do you possess to make yourself employable? Agricultural skills, man. Anything pertaining to agriculture, that's my skills. And actually, are you employed? Yes, I am. What skills do you possess to make you employable? Information technology, basically computer science. Okay. Is this the job, agriculture? Is that, this the job you wanted or is it just something you settled for? No, this job that I want is agriculture. And it always boosts me throughout life and when one is young one must learn to prepare himself for life ahead of him a battle you just have to see life as a battle because if you don't battle your way of living you would not find anything well I is a painter and I is a barber but yes so I'll show a singer but then through certain vibes if I get certain things within and to Grenada I'll make myself and progress my life 
wanted. That is about all it was. I was born and grew in an agricultural family and I, 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 I complete my course. Okay, so. Something I settled for, it's, it's closely to what I really wanted. So for the time, I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. Do qualifications, certifications, or abilities have some type of weight? Yes. Qualification, ability, all these things come within you, within the line of work, within your spirit, the goodwill. Once you keep the Lord, He is the one that will direct you into it. In qualifications, certifications, skills, and abilities, which we see as more important? All of them is important. Ability, qualification, all of them is important to you towards the life that you want to live in, into. Okay. Well, the skill is good, you know, but and every, everybody have a skill within to the life, but what I was saying to you, like, I would like you now the government to the youth who have um, qualification within to the study and the country, I would like them to bring them further on and open a better way so they could see themselves, so they can be home because they need mama and daddy to feed. You know it's a, you know Grenada is like, not because in the morning you wake up, you might eat a bread food or eat some kalalo, or you eat pumpkin or dashing, because we the Caribbean people and we the liberty in the country. So what I was saying to you, during to your respect and to your honor, I would like you to say to the people them, we need more employment for people. Because a lot of people on the street, they suffering. Some people, they got nothing to eat. Although Grenada, yes, it's a nice place. Because everybody knows it's a paradise with love. So what? Yes, 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 yes. Which, which do you find is more important? Well, to be honest with you, skills. Skills, why? Yeah. Well, if you have a particular skills in, in a particular interest, you could do a lot of things, for example. Let's say propagation, for example, like boarding and grafting. Mm -hmm. It's a major skill. You know, a man could learn a lot, and you could do a lot. You could promote the whole country. You know, in in, in terms of being productive, then you know you could propagate plants, you know, vegetatively and so forth. Uh, no, I don't think he does. I think, I think skills is more important than qualifications or certifications. Uh, yeah, in in this era we live in, I think just a little more important. Are you aware of the skills and qualifications needed for jobs available in Grenada today? Ah, yes, I do. For example, if you apply for a bank work, is maths and English they're gonna ask you for? Mm -hmm. So yes, it depends on what area you're applying for. Are you aware of the qualifications and skills needed for jobs available in Grenada? Yes, yes, yes. So what are some of those qualifications and skills? Well, basically, I'm speaking from, from agricultural standpoint. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to have more like, um, well, scientific subjects. Yeah. Scientific subjects. Yeah, scientific subjects. You know? Yeah, put in like things like yeah, AXA and what whatnot. I'm uh, going normal, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. Could you just tell us a little bit about it? Well, first to begin, one must learn to ordain himself into the job that he really wants and motivate himself into the skill that he really do. So if you motivate yourself in the skill that you do, you will get the proper thing towards you. Okay, so thanks right. very much. Well, I find they supposed to look out to themselves too to find work. But then if they look out to themselves and um, the work, they have to make themselves being proper and look out for work. You can't sit down every day and feel things go come in your way. Because if you don't sweat, all you go eat. So some people, they might have the skills and they might have the respect to themselves, but they need to get up to themselves and find a job too. So then we will help them respect. And there we had it. That was Street Talk. Um, very interesting interviews, you know, hearing from random persons, um, the experience with work or qualified they are. Um, which might be more important skills or qualifications, um, but we'll get to that shortly. And this time we get ready for a very exciting segment. It's our quiz time. Quiz time. Sister Asha will take the lead. Okay, our quiz for tonight is entitled Occupation Station. All right. The first question, complete please and give the scriptural reference for the following. 
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are, what? Come, please, please, and give the scriptural reference for the following. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are. Right. Any answers yet? All right, so number one, we ask it that you submit what's missing. Um, that's a very easy one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And the reference comes from Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. Pastor. You give it to me. <laughs> Pastor, that was a pastor the question. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 All right. Alright, we, we we somebody responded the correct answer. Yes. Meryl Green, um Jeanette McKenzie. Wanette McKenzie. Wanette, sorry. Yeah, she's a heavy lady. Right. Wanette McKenzie. Heavy lady, nice. Number two, Brother Joel. Number two. So that's the correct answer is yes. Number two's question. Who am I? My occupation was tent maker. Mm. Who am I? My occupation was tent maker. Question. Who was a tent maker in the Bible? Tell us. Do you know the answer? Where is the text taken from that can prove that? Mm. that? That's not a hard one. Question number two, yeah. Who am I? My occupation was a tent maker. Alright. Ah, someone has it. <laughs> Over no. She says Paul. Excellent. Right. The Apostle Paul, Acts 18, verses 1 to 3. You can see the proof there. Lovely. And number 3, Brother Jamal. Who am I? I am known as a lion tamer. Wow. Who am I? I am known as a lion tamer. They, they had lion tamers in the Bible? Wow. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lion tamer. All right, if let's they see. Were lions, they must be lion tamers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, show me how he's coming in with Paul. All right. That's, That's what question number two. Question yeah, was number correct two. already. Mm -hmm. Congrats, show me you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> so number three, who am I? I'm known as a lion team. Oh, oh, who's going to respond first? Jamal, 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 Jamal Nore. Daniel is mm -hmm. correct. All right, number four, Sister Julian. We had the first real estate war. Who are we? We had the first real estate war. Who are we? Not Joel. Wow. <laughs> Oh, just about to say you in the real estate. <laughs> <laughs> no, <not yet. laughs> right, who are we? Hmm. Interesting question. Samson. Well, you know Samson was sort of a lion team, man. Well, yeah, yeah. a lion destroyer. A lion destroyer. A lion can't speak again. can't speak again. Very team. Any answer? Uh, no, that's a very interesting answer. Yeah. That's the answer I thought in my head also. Abraham and Lot. Yeah. yeah. Good, good response, mm -hmm. but not always. It wasn't before. really a war. It wasn't, yeah. a, it wasn't a war. A nice discussion. Negotiations. <laughs> yes, overland. <laughs> yeah. That one seems a bit tricky. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that one is a bit tricky. Oh. Give them a hint. Give them a hint. Give them a text so they could probably search in their Bibles and see. We're going to tell you the book and the chapter. Yeah. All right. Somebody tell them. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Looking in verse 24 and 227. All right. Who had the first real estate war? All right, we're giving you 10 more seconds. Time is ticking. Nine. Check it, check it, check it. Look at phones. Abraham, no. Not Abraham. Five. Isaac and Jacob? <laughs> no, no. Uh, read Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Jacob and his son. Jacob and his son. No. But good tries, nevertheless. Close, yeah. You smart, you think it. I wonder if I would have gotten that one right, boy. So I had one, boy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Jema, accept my sympathy. <laughs> understand the feeling, yeah. Alright, you want to give them a clue? All right, all right, let's set up the answer. The wise man and the foolish man. Oh, oh, so, oh, Katisha George. <laughs> right, oh, the wise man and the foolish builders. Foolish builders, all right. Oh, yes, nice. oh. Good job, Katisha. So one built on what? Sand. Sand and the other built on? Rocks. On rocks, nice. All right, we go back to Sister Asha, number five. My resume speaks of several types of experience. Shepherd, musician, soldier, mm -hmm. and king. Mm. Who am I? My resume speaks of several types of experiences. Shepherd, 
musician, soldier, king, who am I? You should be typing this answer right now yeah, as an yeah, easy yeah, answer. Yeah, really easy. The adventurous answers. Ah, yes. Congrats, Katisha. You were first. <laughs> All right, David. Next one. Next Good. question. I founded agronomy. My sibling founded animal husbandry. Who are we? Wow. I founded agronomy. My sibling founded animal husbandry. Who are we? So you know it's a sibling. It's probably either a brother and a sister or two brothers. So or two sisters. Or two sisters. It could be two <laughs> sisters also. Two of you. Biblical names. Think of guys in the Bible. Oh, oh. Oh, a Katisha shop tonight, boy. Yes. Cain and oh, Abel. Back back. Congratulations. Yes. I find she have a popular quiz, boy. <laughs> and we're going on to number seven. Mm. Everything I did was good, inclu including wine making. Hmm. Who am I? Wow. Everything I did was good, including wine making. Wine Who am I? I suppose it must be both of Well, congrats, Keisha and Kim. Yeah. Yeah, that was for the last question. You're correct. You're correct, maybe a Julian. Yeah. Um, let's see who's, who's going to have the first one for that. I did everything, wine including wine. wine. Who am I? Wine making. Mm. And then give a huge hint. Oh, there we are. Ah, Rachel. Congrats. Give me a second. Nice. Good job. Good job. You guys are sharp. The next question. My husband worked with his hands. Hmm. I was given a very holy calling. Who are we and what did he do? Nice. My husband worked with his hands. I was given a very holy calling. Who are we and what did he do? Mm. Let's see who gets this one. It has two parts. Eh? Who are we and what did he do? Mm. What did he do? Oh. Katisha <laughs> again, Mary yeah, and Katisha. Joseph. What did Joseph do, Katisha? That's the second part of the question. Mm -hmm. What did he do? What was his profession? Was he a farmer? He said he was good with his hands. Was he a sculptor? No, but no, Mary and Joseph. Yeah, Mary and Joseph. Was Mary. Correct. Right, good, correct. Uh, but what did Joseph do? Yeah, tell us. Uh, carpenter. Carpenter. Okay, Richard. Sure. Congrats, yeah. Joseph was a carpenter. I was a jeweler and sculptor. Who am I? Hmm. I was a jeweler and sculptor. Who am I? <laughs> Jeweler and sculptor, who am I? Ketisha uh, ain't answered this one yet? What's happening? <laughs> Come on, Ketisha. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we still seen answers coming in from the last question. Mm -hmm. It's good. Jeweler and sculptor, who am I? Jessie Bell. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jessie Bell, who jewels? She was the jeweler. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting answer, Kalisha. <laughs> Jay Z Bellboy. Jewel and Sculptor. Who am I? <laughs> Let's hear them a clue. Male or female? Male. Male. Alright, as a male. He sculpted a big, a big, big, big image and God wasn't pleased. So we're giving away the answers. He sculpted <laughs> a nice image. God wasn't pleased. Mm -hmm. Hint, hint. His name starts in what letter? Yeah, that's what I'm Oh boy, that's like too much you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can Let's look in Exodus 32. Oh, oh, sorry, Maria. <laughs> two to four. So I got Exodus 32. Ah, yes. Ah, Katisha, Katisha yes. again. Yeah. Katisha, I think you deserve a prize. Yeah. You should, you should go claim it. <laughs> yeah, if, if, you get, if you get number 10, you will get a prize. All right, good. So our final question for, for tonight. This one is a tricky one also, yeah. difficult. You would think it says, I was a fashion designer and naturalist. Mm. Who am I? What were my clothes made of? And what did my diet consist of? Mm. I'm going to repeat it. I was a fashion designer Whoa. and naturalist. Right. Who am I? What were my clothes made of? And what did my diet consist of? Hmm. Who's this person about? A fashion designer I, I in the Bible? I thought fashion designer was recently. Yeah. And I thought many women back then were fashion designers. Yeah, I don't know that. since then we had male fashion designers. Wow, wow. Just give a clue. A guy who worked on the temple. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, honest. So one two is that way? <laughs> Adam boy. Oh, John the Baptist. Oh, yeah, Desiree. Oh, Desiree. Desiree. Yeah, Desiree. 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 And he was a natural to see it, locust and wild honey. <laughs> right. And Mindy also has it, locust honey, John the Baptist. Yeah, oh, someone, Kelvin, give a good answer also. Adam and Eve, figure Adam and Eve, they saw Wow, wow, wow. So, so we have some nice answers. And Adam and Eve were also natural yeah. because they had fruits and grains. Yeah, <laughs> so that's a good answer, answer to Kelvin. Good answer. Yeah. All right, so that was a very, very eye opening and um, informative session of our quiz. Mm -hmm. And at this time, we get down to some of our uh, main discussions for tonight. Um, so, so far we have been talking a lot about employment and our topic is, are you employable? And as we get ready to go forward, again, we ask him that you invite your friends, um, like the page, send out our post for tonight, hashtag youth life is back, tell a friend. Um, now, whenever we talk about employment, skills come to mind. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And while we need to have secular skills, we need to have spiritual, spiritual skills, skills as well. Um, so we want to look at a mixture of the both. Um, because you can be so spiritually skilled and you're not secularly skilled, I don't think you'll be profitable on the job. Mm -hmm. um, you can be so secularly skilled um, with no moral backings, and at the same time, you would not be the best employee um, within the balance. Um, what are some skills that are very important for every person to possess as a faithful Christian worker? Sasha, you want to go first? Well, first of all, I think you should be able to speak well. You should be able to speak yes. well. Mm -hmm. um, some persons come highly qualified, but they don't know how to speak to people. Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, that's especially in social jobs, for instance, when you go to um, stores or so, mm -hmm. and people speak to you, you wonder if they really belong there or they, their passion was to be somewhere mm -hmm. in a, on a desk. I think communication is a very important skill that everybody mm. who is looking for employment should possess. Oh yeah. You, you know, interestingly, as you responded, you said um, you should know how to speak. And you know, it, immediately what came to my mind was you should be eloquent. Mm. Um, but I love this slide yeah. that you took, you know, That's in terms nice. of being able to relate to people. Yeah. Um, so you can be the best public speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, but you cannot, you know, mm -hmm. say it in a relatable, mm -hmm. social, yeah, friendly way. And um, it, 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 you could have that skill as a waste. Mm -hmm. um, so, so not only are we to be eloquent, being able to express our points, um, but we should be very courteous and warm and welcoming. Lovely. Oh yeah, excellent. And by extension of communication, I think something that helps under the lines of employment mm -hmm. is being able to make eye contact. Right. Uh, lots of young persons, you know, they go for an interview and the, the interviewer is trying to speak to them mm -hmm. and they're looking at them and the young person, they have their heads down. Right. I'm not right. sure if it's because we're always in our cell phones now cell phone that persons right. can no longer keep their heads up. Right. But when you're speaking or you're trying to go for a job or interview or something, mm -hmm. it's important to make eye contact. Mm -hmm. Not just for a job, in general communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you make eye contact with someone, they feel like you're connecting with them. And well, as a teacher, you would know that, of course, you make eye contact <laughs> yeah. with your children all the time. Yeah. yeah, so that's a very important skill on the communication, eye contact. Don't forget it. Uh, and you know, interestingly, so we had eloquence, we had courtesy, um, but in order to say something, you must know what you're saying. Oh, yeah. um, you, know, you know, many persons go to a job and you have things like rules and regulations, manuals, you have protocols that guide you. And many times, especially young people, they don't take time to study it. <laughs> um, so you might have a meeting, an issue comes up, <coughs> and sometimes we communicate wrong information. Mm. Um, sometimes, I hate when this happens, you, you go to an office and you're asking questions, and you're speaking to somebody who should know, but yeah. they have to one call somebody and ask them. Um, so I think we should be well informed. Oh, yeah. So as we speak and as we give information, you know, persons will be, will be able to um, connect with us. Um, we don't want to lose our audience online. And we're just discussing some of the skills that are necessary um, for having employment, for being employable. Um, please share yours. We're going to recognize them. We're going to discuss them as well. And the first thing we looked at being, we should have communication skills. Eloquence, you should be informed, and you should be courteous and warm as well. Oh, yeah. What are some other skills? Yeah, well, I, I want to add to that, uh, or to the, the skills that are necessary. And what I want to add is teamwork. Mm -hmm. I see teamwork as being of vital importance. In, in being employable or also in being employed. Whether you are an employer or an employee, teamwork is very important. As an employer, if you cannot work with a team, 
you will hire staff for waste. Yeah, you yeah, may be paying yeah. your staff, but because you're so selfish and you just want to get things done by yourself, yeah, yeah. you may be doing all the work mm -hmm. and you have staff collecting the salary and they're just sitting and watching you kill right, yourself. Right, 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 right. Uh, also, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an employee, mm -hmm. you want to be able to be part of a team and to work as a team mm -hmm. yeah. so that the other teammates, they will have your back, you can have their back also. Yeah, yeah. And teamwork reminds me of Christ. Mm -hmm. When he says that the body, mm -hmm. and we are part of the body, Right. The eye has its function, the hand has its function, the mm -hmm. legs, mm -hmm. every body part has its own function, although it's still part of one body. Yeah. And in, in the Church of Christ, we are all part of one body. Mm -hmm. And just the same way, when we go to be employed and we go to a place of employment, we are part of a team. That job has one common purpose, one common goal, mm -hmm. whether it is to sell ice cream, everybody plan is to sell ice cream, that's how you're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. So you're part of the team, whether you're the person sweeping the floor, you're part of the employment that is selling ice cream. Mm -hmm. So you have an important role also. So yeah. you see yourself as important, see your role as important, mm -hmm. and be a good team player. And we have one that also says we should have a positive attitude. Mm. And uh, that, that's very important. Regardless of what you, you may be doing, you should be happy, positive, optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of teamwork, how can we as Christians be a witness um, as we are part of a team? How does our Christianity come into play? Yeah. I think, I think uh, being part of the team, what really stands out and what really is important for us Christians is being true to who we are mm -hmm. and being a witness where you go. It's one thing to say you're a Christian, but when you're part of a team and something comes up or an opportunity comes up for you to be honest about a situation, you're the one not being honest. Right. right. Or, or you have to make a decision and, and you're the one making a decision that a Christian should not be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be a hypocrite. If you profess one thing and you're part of a team, make sure that your life shows what you profess. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Nice. And, um, and even Timo, what about um, pulling your weight? Um, Julian, have you ever had um, <laughs> any group assignment in school? And um, probably <sighs> four members. Um, but one person had to burn the midnight oil while oh everybody boy. just oh had boy. a free ride. I think everybody had that experience at one point. So, so we must be fair, you know, yes. in order to work with, um, work along with the team. Yeah, I'm very well honest. And um, what, what are some other skills we're looking at? I think we just have good um problem, so problem solving yes. skills mm -hmm. because in any workplace, any environment you go in, you will encounter problems. And once we have this proper attitude on how to tackle things, communication comes in place again. Mm -hmm. Then I, I think we would be able to to see it at a different angle. And as as Christians. How the, the mere man will go about attacking a, a problem when it comes to them aggressively and no self-control. We, we, we should be remain calm mm -hmm. and you know, I try to think of other alternatives mm -hmm. in ways of dealing with that problem right. and not only focusing on the problem but at the same time the, the, the sense should kick in on how to immediately solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Because it would be good to be in an institution and a problem arise and you could seek a solution to the problem without the boss coming and saying, okay, this is what you do. Right. You take the initiative and, you know, you start doing it and along the way the boss might come and say, okay, in your absence this happened and this is what I do. So with good problem skills, you might be able to, you know, raise the bar for your right. standard in the organization and even promotion in the near future. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Problem solving skills. Problem solving skills. Very important. good, very good. Um, Sister mm -hmm. Jillian was not really focusing on initiative, but she did um, mention it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think initiative is something that you have to have wherever you are employed. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we as employees, we wait until we are told to do something mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. in order to do it, mm -hmm. even though we see the need for it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say, for instance, um, the office where you work is missing a stapler. You know right. that that is creating a problem, but right. oh, my boss is not providing it. Right. I'm going to wait on <laughs> I think we as Christians and just and anybody yeah. we should have initiative. Initiative, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's very, very important. Yeah. It's still yeah. important. You know we've been talking about employment and working and stuff, but I also like to link that to school. Mm -hmm. You know, like communication and students mm -hmm. should be able to communicate with the teachers and oh, respect yeah. for also teachers. The um way they speak to the students, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yes, students may be very um, what's it like? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe very stubborn. 
but but um teachers and um, one of these skills they need to have is patience. Patience, right? Yeah, patience. Right, right, right. Nice. Good. 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 So communication. Mm -hmm. But communication even extends into the scenario he was speaking about with students. Mm -hmm. For seven students, that's where communication skills come in. Mm -hmm. Teachers especially they have an added responsibility in dealing with stubborn children. A stubborn child, you have to give them more time, more care and attention. Yeah. And the way you speak to them, the way you deal with them have to be different from the way you deal with a normal child. Yeah. So problem solving also comes in there. Mm. And it's naturally, not everyone is a good problem solver. So some of these skills, they are learned. Over time, mm -hmm. you learn these okay. skills and you're quiet in time. And I, I must say, Pastor, that being part of the organization, which is being part of the clubs, you mm -hmm. learn a lot of these skills as being part of the club. So yeah. join the clubs and, and learn some of these skills. You learn a lot in the clubs. From adventurers come all the way up, mm -hmm. they teach you a lot of these life skills, skills that you're not really born with. But you develop them over time when you interact and you do different courses and so on. What, what about perseverance? Um, you know, sometimes they, you know, I speak with Christian friends. Um, they are on a job, mm -hmm. very stressful, stressing them to death. They want to leave, but they are dependent on the salary. Um, what would you say to a person, although we have to be posse, persevering or have perseverance, um, should you stay and take the stress, even if it makes you mentally? Sick. Mm. Um, even though you need the money, how how, how should how, how much perseverance is enough? Mm. Um, how perseverance should we be? What what are our thoughts? I think I think we all should strive to to be the best that we can be wherever we're placed. If you are the garbage collector, you should be the best garbage collector and push yourself to continue to be the best. Not just to remain there, but always persevere to do more, mm -hmm. to do something extra. And when God is ready for you, he's going to open the door for you. Yeah. Remember, uh, David was not born a king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He started off being what? He was a shepherd. Mm -hmm. So he started off there, but he did not just see it as, oh, this is what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. He became one of the best shepherds that he could be. He protected his animals. He protected everything. And God was able to see something in him because he persevered in that post he had. Mm -hmm. God was able to see something special in him. And God placed him where he wanted to be. So continue doing what you're doing, persevere. I mean, it may not be perfect, it will not be easy all the time. Some jobs are very stressful and challenging and difficult, but push it, push through it. I mean, pray every morning. Before you go in on mornings, ask God to really guide you and give you the strength to, to make it through another day. Say, Lord, just give me this day. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. And as you strive, as you go, someone is going to see something in you. Someone is going to notice something. Just like God noticed David and he was able to make him king, your employment wants to see or maybe even another employer from another company and I say you know what that young lady is a very hard working lady mm -hmm. she did not even teach for payment she was a volunteer <laughs> <laughs> and she did it so diligently she came to work on time and she had a smile on her face because of that I'm going to put her to manage my company yeah, yeah. So, so, so if I'm reading between the lines you, you're saying that a Christian should never quit under stress are you saying that? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> there might be some circumstances where you may have to quit, mm -hmm. but God's the guidance and with God's leadership, mm -hmm. pray about it. If God says that, if God directs you to quit, to leave the job, that means he has something else for you. Mm -hmm. I believe that whenever God closes the door, there's another one waiting for you to enter. Mm -hmm. So right. sometimes you may just have to leave where you are to get somewhere else, but uh, only when God wants you to. Mm -hmm. pray about it. So you should only leave a job when you get a clear indication from God. Yes. Even yes. if you're stressed every day. Even if you're stressed every day. Sometimes God yes. wants it to be stressed. To be Remember, there. gold, that try and fire. Right, right, That's right, when you get right, the purest right. gold. Right. So the more pressure you get there, you become a better person. Yeah. Right, right, right. Very and enough. something that I have found also, if you are passionate about something, mm -hmm. regardless of the stresses that you get, right. once that passion is there to motivate you, yeah. you will be successful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So, so finding purpose is very important mm -hmm. to find that pass, um, passion. Um, what about self-management? I think that's one of the most difficult things for anybody mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. What is self-management? I mean, in one line, how would we describe as self-management? We, we, we all know how to manage people, but what does it mean <laughs> to manage ourselves? Uh, no, another question. No, well, I, 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 I paused so someone else could speak. I was hoping that someone in the audience, uh, not the audience, someone on Facebook could share something yeah. also. Or, or viewers? What, or what viewers, is self-management? We're giving you a chance to share something tonight. The panel don't want to do all the talking tonight. 
Um, while we're waiting, Sister Meryl made a good point. We should be open minded. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, open minded. Very well. Open to correction, open to new ideas, yeah. open to work along with different people. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking at self management, um, how important it is, what is it actually? Well, while, while persons think and while they type their responses, to me self-management has everything to do with everything that you could do for yourself that others can't really do for you. Mm -hmm. From setting up out your life to choose your clothes that you're going to wear to work, mm -hmm. to deciding what time you wake on mornings to start preparing to ensure you get to work on time, mm -hmm. to ensure that you're properly groomed and everything, to ensure that you don't, do, don't just focus on doing one particular task on your job, when you have five things to do, but you spend all day doing one thing, manage yourself, manage your life, manage everything that you could do for yourself that someone else can do for you. Right. So it's basically governing your life and your operations. Yeah. Precisely that. Is it easier to manage others or to manage ourselves? Which one is that? I think sometimes managing self is a bit more challenging than others. Yeah. A lot of the times we know the orders to give to people, we know exactly <laughs> what to say. Yes, but when it comes to ourselves, um, oh, yeah. setting those boundaries kind of is hard mm. for us. Um, one of the struggles in self-management, well, being that I was a student for every part of my life that I can mm. remember, and then getting into a job, it was very hard to mm. manage my social life and my working life. Mm -hmm. So what you find is that your working life spews over into your social right, life. Right. And then you start realizing that you don't quite have a life. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> Almost, right. so to speak. Yeah. I think um, that is where self-management comes in. You do yeah. not want to burn both ends of the candle and then mm -hmm. there's no, yeah. no more candle. <laughs> So, so you could be efficient and productive on the job, but at the same time, you have to be efficient and productive for your body as well. Yes. Yes. Um, and well. family. And your family. Yeah. Thank you. One of has a nice response that she says, self-management, self-regulation, our biggest job. It requires that we understand our tasks and our strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Very important. We need to know our strengths and weaknesses. And we have another one from Ketisha George. She said, knowing what you have to do and getting it done without being told to do it. Um, Gillian, um, what's that one from Nova Nol here? It says doing Nova things. Doing things without being told. Right. Be proactive and not wait to be told what task to do. Mm -hmm. we, we also have um, Mary yeah. coming out and then we have her response which it says taking responsibility yes. for one's own behavior mm -hmm. and well-being in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. um, what about honesty? Um, we don't want to go into mm -hmm. details about it in any way. Um, but um, in, the in the recent week, you know, we, we've been hearing some troubles there in terms of the, the work environment and the, the simple message we're going to take, we're not referencing it in any way, yes, yes. Um, but being honest on your workplace. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are many temptations on the job mm -hmm. um, to steal things, to be dishonest with your time, um, in, 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 in order um, how productive you are. Um, sometimes people in terms of signing the book. Um, signing the hours that they actually work for the pay that they have to get and many things you could get away scot-free um, How important is honesty on the job? Mm. That's a big one. This is very very important and sometimes sometimes I think we take it lightly and we don't see how serious it is mm -hmm. for us to really give an honest day's work mm -hmm. on honest day's pay. Right. If the employer is paying you to work from 8 to 4 as a Christian, it is your responsibility and duty to give them your service mm -hmm. from eight to four. Uh, I and I think as Christians, we, we, we could so fall easily into that trap that the devil has set. Sometimes he makes us think that we have to do something for church. Mm -hmm. So you might take out of your day while you're on the job, maybe plan a program, a UI program that might take you two, three hours. That shouldn't be that time that you would have that that you plan and that you schedule to work for your employer, that's the employer's time. You work and be honest about it. So even if you're doing functioning. something good. Mm -hmm. Even if you're doing something yeah, good. Right. Yep. Right, right. So so when you're on work you should be doing only work related to Do what you're supposed to. I'm not saying that that you, you might not take a short instance to yeah. maybe encourage someone or some of my call with something personal. Mm -hmm. But don't spend prolonged hours, prolonged time nice. working doing your own bidding doing your own bidding on the job and, and the employers are thinking that hey this person is working and, and I'm paying them to work and on the other hand you're not yeah. that's dishonesty yeah. Yeah, you know. 
Well, um, yes, I like to think that with you know, and mm -hmm. being rewarded by Jesus, you know, by God. Honestly, when we are honest, you know, God opens more doors, He gives us and rewards us for the good things that we do. So, then being honest and job, being honest to yourself, mm -hmm. that brings a great reward from God. And, Amen. Yeah. Nova has a very nice answer mm -hmm. and a very nice comment. She says, Honesty shows our integrity. Mm -hmm. We should treat the job as though it's our company. Mm -hmm. How we would feel if our employees were given the same amount we are given our employer. Nice. So very, very that's good. the way to approach it. That's and yeah. very good. I saw someone liked it. That's 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 the way to approach it. Mm -hmm. So treat your job as if you were the employer. How would you feel? Mm -hmm. So give an honesty as well. And sometimes when we talk of honesty on the workplace, we think of being honest to the employer. Mm -hmm. And as he rightly said. Honesty should first begin with us. Mm -hmm. You do things because you want to be honest to yourself. You want to have this clear conscience. When you think no one else is watching, mm -hmm. something my grandmother used to always say, when no one else is watching, there is still one person that sees. Mm -hmm. You understand? So then we must always be honest to ourselves so that we can have a clear conscience going on in the world. Because sometimes the simplest thing that we might pick up or take, put in our bags and walk away with, when even one major thing is missing our work, yeah. that same thing we did comes back to our mind. Yeah. Because we did something that no one saw, no one knows, but it sticks with mm -hmm. us. So we must first be honest with ourselves, and then if we reciprocate, we can be honest to us others. And just to piggyback on what you said, um, even though we think that people are not looking, somebody is always, yeah. somebody at the workplace is always yeah. observing as well, you know. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, one of my past employers, he, was very particular about the people him, he employed. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that he laid out at the beginning was, would my faith mm -hmm. affect the work? Mm -hmm. And one day we were speaking and he was like, I know it is very tempting to work extra hours when you work online. And I was looking to see if you work up, um, on Saturdays and so on. Yeah. So even though we think that someone is not looking, they are actually looking. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, <laughs> nice, nice, very interesting. So eyes are always upon us, yeah. um, even when we are not conscious of our face. Yeah. Um, very well. Um, you, you know, um, one thing before before I get to what I was saying, quite you saying consistency is oh, yeah. also essential. essential on the job. Yeah. You know, even when trials come your way, keeping focus is it's paramount. Right. Christ had a tough time in Gethsemane, but in the end, he said, not my, my will, but thine. thine. So we should always do the same and focus on the whole. Well said, Koi. Big up to you, Koi. What's up? You know, I was about to mention about promotion. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's one of the, the highlights, you know, of the employment you know, experience. Persons want betterment. Yeah. Um, we don't always want to say the same place. And a lot of squabbles we have, a lot of um, immoral issues, take place, you know, as persons are striving for more. Um, even persons, immoral acts with the, with the boss, mm. persons mm. tearing down other persons, mm. um, persons would lie just to, just to get ahead. Um, now, as a Christian, in the face of promotion, um, how should we handle ourselves? How should be, how, how, what should the behaviors be like? I think um, once you give up your best, you give your best of yourself, that should speak for you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So whatever you put your hand to, mm -hmm. you give it your best go. You don't Sometimes. just give it halfway mm -hmm. just because. Um, and people will speak on your behalf. God will see to it oh, that yeah. you will mm -hmm. get where you want to go. Yeah. So just do your best, mm -hmm. and that's it, right? At all times. Amen. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Any, anybody else? Should, should we do anything outside of our character to... Get ahead? No, I don't think we should do anything out of our character mm -hmm. to get ahead. Mm -hmm. But as a Christian receiving promotion, I think we should jump to the roof. Because at the first of it, we should be honest. Yeah. And we know when we get that promotion, it's because we work hard and we work true. Yeah. So tackling promotion as a Christian should be a good thing. Mm -hmm. If you're a Christian and getting a promotion stirs up some kind of negative emotion, then you know you did something wrong along the way to attain mm. that promotion. Right, right, right. But once you're on the right line, I think you should be jumping, right. having right. a nice time. So the success should be sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It was well resolved. Yeah. Nice. Remember, God wants us to be there. Yeah. 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 Uh, what about technology? 
you you have a, a lot of Christians say Facebook Babylon system, the mm -hmm. mark of the beast. Um, they they going to catch us through Facebook. Oh, they going to know where we are, what we're doing. Um, but we the truth is we live in a, a technologically advanced age. Um, how can we be technologically savvy without being distracted by all the temptations out there? How important is you know being abreast with technology? Should we? I think I think we can we can't hide from it. Mm -hmm. It's all around us. We can't put our head under under a basket and pretend it's not there. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is use it for the positive. Yes. Right. So we right. cannot technology is all around us. Everyone is in it, everyone is doing it. Mm -hmm. And and right now right now it's a it's a wonderful means uh, to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. So we can't pretend that technology is there, we just need to use it in a positive way. Positive. Yeah. Use it in a yeah. positive way. And there's there are so many things out there. Uh, some things they're not they're not bad things, mm -hmm. but it can be used for the for bad. Yeah. Uh, but as Christians, uh, God would have placed us here for a reason, and it is our responsibility, our need to use those things that He has provided for us, whatever means and mediums, mm -hmm. for the positive. Good example. Use it for good. Utilize. Utilize, of yeah. course. Yeah. With all the internet and technology, we would not <laughs> be able to facilitate this program. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, it has its benefits. Um, can someone read a comment from Victoria St. John for us? Yes, sure. Go ahead. Happy Sabbath, young people. Determine where the stress is coming from. Determining where the stress is coming from. Is it management, co-workers, workload, your own personal family life, or from the people you serve? Prayer, smile, knowing and doing your best. Prioritize things. Going the extra mile. Patience. 